One of the most common questions that people ask in the comment section here on the channel is why don't all math books have solutions to all of the exercises? And in this video, I'm going to answer that question for you. This is a question that I usually don't reply to because the answer is a little bit long and kind of involved. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make this video just to tell you what I think and give you some pretty good reasons. I'm gonna give you three. The first reason is actually pretty deep. So before I give you that reason, I'm just gonna briefly talk about the different types of solutions that you find in math books. So first let's look at this book here. This is the Calculus with Analytic Geometry and this is by Lewis Lighthold. This book is a classic. Lewis Lighthold was a mentor and an inspiration for the real Jaime Escalante from the movie Stand and Deliver. So if you've seen that movie, Lewis Lighthold was an inspiration to Jaime. So the answers here are to the odd numbered exercises. So this is typical in like a big calculus book. So like the books by Larson, by Stewart, most of the modern books that are used in colleges and universities today at the calculus level have answers to the odd numbered problems. Still, of course, it would be better if we had all the answers. Here's an excellent analysis book, Analysis with an Introduction to Proof by Lay. And so this one just has answers to selected exercises that usually means it's less than the odds. You'd have to count, but it's usually less than the odds. So this has even a less solutions. And when you get to something even harder like topology, you have no answers. So this is the famous book by Monkreis, and this book has zero solutions. This is a legendary book. It's totally amazing and worth it, but you don't get any answers. So why do we have all of these books and no solutions to all of the problems? The best way to explain it is by showing you an actual math problem and how people actually learn math. So here's a problem from this book here. This is the one on analysis by Lay. And let's look at number 23.3. Prove that f of x equals the square root of x is uniformly continuous on the interval zero to infinity. So this problem is not hard. It's pretty straightforward. But if you don't know how to do it, the best way to learn is to fall back to the definition of uniform continuity sit down with a pencil and paper and try to do the problem because that's how you learn. You learn by struggling and trying to figure it out on your own. I used to have this teacher and he used to always say, I learned by banging my head against the wall. I remember every time he said that, I thought, what a weird comment. But I think what he was trying to say is, it takes effort. You have to actually struggle. And this is directly related to having solutions because if you have solutions, the natural human instinct is to take the easy way out. It's just how human beings are wired, right? We want what's easy, you know, it's just better. So if you look at this problem and maybe you're just trying to finish your homework, if you have the answer, you're gonna to go to the back of the book and you're gonna look for the answer. So that's great, right? You have the answers, but then you don't go through that struggling process. And so teachers, right, teachers know that, right? Math professors know that. They know that the best way to learn mathematics, especially more advanced mathematics like this, right? This is beyond calculus. This is the kind of thing usually like a math major would study. In order to learn this stuff, you gotta put in the time, right? You gotta struggle. And so teachers know that, and so they prefer that students go through that process, so they prefer that books don't have all the answers. So that is reason number one. The number one reason, and I'm not saying it's the most important, but it's a very popular reason that they don't have the answers, is that teachers don't want you to have the answers because they want you to struggle and they want you to learn. So that first reason is really because teachers want students to learn and they're afraid that if they just look at the answers, the students won't learn. The second reason is more really about the teachers exclusively. So if you're a teacher and you're assigning homework from this book here, this is Introduction to Complex Variables by Caldwell and Matthews. It's a really cool cover, right? Anyways, if you're assigning homework from this book, you want the students to work alone on the exercises because you're going to grade that homework. So if the book has solutions to every problem and you assign the homework, then a lot of the students will just copy the problems down, right? They'll copy the solutions down. Why? Because we're human beings, right? We're wired to take the easy way out most of the time. So it's just natural human instinct. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that's what the majority of people will do. 
And so teachers know that, and so that's another reason they prefer books that don't have you know, all the solutions. And the third reason is that maybe the authors are, I hate to say it, but just lazy. And I only say this because I'm thinking of it from my personal point of view. People often say, hey, you should write a math book. You know, you'd, you'd write a great math book, people would buy it. I collect math books and I have so many books and so many of them are amazing. There are so many good books out there and I just feel like, I don't know, why would I do that, right? Plus, it's a lot of work to write a math book. It takes so much work. This is why I rarely talk bad about books. Even if I think the book is not great, I'll never come out and say it's bad because I realize how much time and effort it took to write these books. So if you're an author and you write a book and you go through and you finish everything and you come up with all of these exercises for students to solve, it is a Herculean task to actually have to write proofs for all of these problems. This is an abstract algebra book. It's pretty advanced. Even though it's called basic algebra, it's a pretty advanced book. Um, so imagine if the author had to go through and write solutions for all of these. So that is another reason that I think a lot of times books don't have all of the answers. There are some math books that do have all of the answers and usually you can find at least one in every subject. For example, if you're interested in topology, the topology book by Game Linen Green has full solutions even to all of the proofs in the back of the book. Why? Why does it deviate from the reasons that I just gave? The answer is, I don't know, right? But most math books don't have all the answers. So there you have it. Those are the reasons that a lot of times you won't find all of the answers in most books. And I personally think that, this is just my opinion, I personally think that for me, as a person who is, you know, picking up this book, let's say, and if I want to work through this book, I would like to check my answers, right? So for me, I would like to have solutions to all of the answers. Another point of view is one that is not popular, perhaps, and I'm just going to come out and say it, is, okay, the professors don't want the students to you know, have all the answers because they're worried that the students will just look in the back of the book. Well, I think, so what? Let them look, right? Don't try to put restrictions on people. I think it's better if you let the student make the decision himself or herself, right? If you're a student and you know that it's better to try to work it out on your own, then I think you should be able to take that responsibility into your hands. And I think it'd be better if all math books had all the answers. But again, there's other reasons, for example, the amount of work and also things like assigning homework from books. So at the end of the day, I think we're never gonna reach a point in history where we have all of the answers in math books. I mean, it might happen, but it might take a very long time, especially in advanced math books like these. Anyways, kind of a long rant. I just wanted to answer that question that I always get in the comments and I just always avoid answering it because as you can see, it has a very, very complex response and there's all kinds of reasons. What do you think? Why do you think math books don't have all the answers? I'm really, really interested in seeing what people have to say about this topic. It's always been something that I have always wondered about and I'm pretty sure the reasons I gave, especially the first one, is probably the biggest one, but I'm interested in your opinion. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, good luck and take care.